Hello and welcome back to the Piro Podcast. This week we will be discussing how the D1 drivers fared around the Marina Bay circuit as well as what impact that those results had on the standings. Joining me tonight is none other than Piro Gary Donegan. How are you doing Gary? I'm doing very well. How about you? Not too bad, not too bad on this sunny day. Enjoying the sun. Beautiful day. Um, so let's kick it off. Like always, let's start with Quali. Work our way through the, I guess, the ones who won from Quali and the ones who lost. And then we'll work through the race. So if you want to fire us away, that would be I'd love to. beautiful. Um, Paul, dominantly taken by the championship leader, Michael, with 36.2, which is a It's a very good lap. Plan. It's a very good lap. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And then followed by Mitch, your teammate, who seems to have woken up at the backstage of the <laughs> season. <laughs> As always, when he finds his interest, uh, he can he can probably even surprise himself sometimes, which I don't think he yeah, realises. He's pretty quick around Singapore. He was, even though he was three tenths off, Michael. Then we had Neo in third. That has to be his best quality. That's best quality of the season. Potentially, but it was good to see him back up there again. Yeah, and he didn't have any FPS lag or um And he didn't lag out. <laughs> yeah, anything like that, so I say he was happy with that. And then we had my, no, sorry, not Michael, uh, Falcon in P four. Not bad for because, him, like I mean he's still mm-hmm. in touch with that front row. It's not like he's down in P eight or something. Kind of off his teammate, though. Yeah, not ideal. Sure. It was kind of lucky the likes of June, Decky, Lewis and some yeah, of the top were, tier right. drivers were weren't racing. Yeah. Then we had Harry and P five on the Super Softs, didn't it? Great lap on them were thirty six eight. I believe those tires are eight tenths a lap slower than oh. the ultras. So that lap was Theoretically. incredible to be fair. He could have done 36 dead if he had gone on the ultras. And he probably could have gone quicker. Um, I mean, I think he was playing it very safe going on supers. I think if he had done yeah. a, a bit of mental maths, he could have worked out quite easily that the rain was probably going to arrive at the end of the ultra soft stage, yeah, provided our information off. was right. Yeah, You can you can stress yourself as well. Even though they lose performance, they do last. They go a long, a long way, way. yeah. yeah. Uh, Calica P6, very good quality from him. Uh, myself in P7, then we had you in P8, Adam in P9, probably his first top 10 quality of the season, first and only, um, Jerry in P10, Owen in P11, and then YH, YY in P12, who didn't set time. We Pretty should probably uh, mention, sounds odd hearing the likes of me and Gary that far up. But there were only yeah, 12 drivers, drivers. Yeah. so yeah. it was, it was kind of by out. default in a way. Um, yeah. It was really a, it was a shame to see only 12 appear. I know the Germany game was on, which was where yeah. I believe two of our or three of our drivers were watching. Um, yeah. I think it Probably was an unlucky it. coincidence that majority couldn't make it. Then I know I'm Rick's like kind of like on a holiday or something, and yeah, uh, he's, I think he's on his way to Spain right yeah. now. Calic is on holiday these next two weeks, so he won't be here. So it'll be, uh, oh. it could be another low grid uh, come Saturday again. Hopefully not, but we will see. Yeah, ho- yeah hopefully not. But yeah, that rounds off quality. Um, standout performance was Michael taken power by. Absolutely. Very, very good lap by him. Yeah, it was. And then Harry pulling that lap on the super softs, getting P5. So yeah. Moving then on to the race. Oh, very, it was very crazy. Race. It was crazy. I, I mean, I know why you crazy. love it, but it was uh, those conditions were so so challenging. There were so many yeah. switchover points where if you get it wrong, you're gonna lose a lot of time. And it was like, do you pit for wets and then inters, or do you just drag out the yeah, inters? Yeah. There were a lot of different possible options, and ultimately. Yeah. I believe the highest finishers made the right call on all of them, which is why they're yes. probably there. It is why we were there. Um, Mitch, he's absolute master in the rain. 
I don't know what it is. To. I've talked to him, and he doesn't. He thinks it's because the conditions are trickier, and it suits his style of driving. But I don't know what it is. But he is genuinely very, very good in the rain. Like, and he's on a wheel as well, which <laughs> is supposed to be slower down the pad in the that rain. That is true, actually. Absolutely destroys every time it everyone every time it rains. Like you think, oh, it might have just been a lucky race, but every time it rains, Mitch is on the ball every single time. Always. I mean, to Mark. gap Michael the way Mitch did was incredible. I was, he was a good five or six seconds behind him before it started to rain, and then he goes and win the race by thirty seconds. It's yeah, absolutely crazy. Incredible. Then we had Michael and P two. He'd be very happy. Solid that. race by him. Yeah. He got what he needed what to do. Really? Yeah, and then we had me in P3. That say that again. The <laughs> I was in P3. PRL underscore Derry Donegan took home P3, and I have to say, I am extremely happy for you. Um, I drove a terrible race by my standards. I was not driving particularly well. I was kind of all over the shop, and I honestly did not deserve that P3 whatsoever. I got kind of lucky with a strategy call Jeff told me to pit and I thought oh sod it I'll follow what Jeff says <laughs> and it turns out it was quite a decent call it was a bit early but a lot of people ended up making it too late and yeah. it gained me a heap of time um, so I'm really glad you got that because I didn't drive well and I think you yeah, thoroughly I didn't think earned I was gonna him. and I saw you fly past and I was like well <laughs> that's that then um, then we had you and P4 I mean, so I'm happy with that, but like, yeah, on, a, said. on a 12 man grid, it sort of means a bit less. And to be honest, anything, yeah. at least from my perspective, at the end of the season seems to mean a bit less because people just aren't as engaged as they were at the start of the season. Yeah, so, very true. not quite as happy as I would have been if it was on the opening race or something. Yeah. Um, we had Neo and P5 then. Oh, excuse me, on the four stop. Yeah. Ugh. Notoriously bad at strategy. Um, yeah, it's something he Jeff just has not mastered this entire game. I'm not sure if his Jeff is just uh, having a bit of banter with him and thought, oh, sod <laughs> it, let's put him on the wrong strategy or something. Yeah, I think he was the only one out of the top uh, five who pitted for the Wests. I believe he had pays for second, actually, because I, apparently yeah. he was faster than Michael. And it, given the fact that Michael made that horrendous strategy call to stay out, yes, yeah, a, a, a two laps too long, at least a lap too long. Um, ne I think Neo would have definitely gone, but Neo just, I, I don't know. As much as Jeff told him to pit, I would have thought, given that he knew the forecast, he would have thought, let's stretch out these inters, yeah. let's see what everyone else does, because he was in a good position. He didn't need yeah, to he was, he was risk it all MP3 with one yeah. strategy call. Uh, Adam in P6. Good finish by him. Brought, bringing yeah, in I the points. He's on a roll. I think that's his fourth points finish now. It's not too bad. And then we had his teammate in P7, who also did the four stop. Um, Kalik in P8. He had a horrendous race, he told me. Yeah. So he I was see really him, Every time he was on the stream, he was just crashing. Um. Falcon and P9, wow. I on mean, we what talked about this history? just a little bit before the podcast. Um, Falcon <laughs> knew he needed to win. Like, if he didn't need to win, he had to beat Michael, which was basically he needed to win because he knew Michael would be there or thereabouts. Yeah. And everything was going pretty well um, after the first yeah. stop. Falcon made an inspired strategy call and. Fair play to him. I think he paid the same lap as me and you, but obviously yeah, he we're, was ahead yeah. of us. So when he made the decision to pit, the conditions were different when we made that, if you know what I mean. So he made a yeah, very yeah, good yeah. strategy call. And mad props to him, it worked out. He leapfrogged Michael and Mitch. Um, or he might have just been ahead of Mitch, I don't know. But either way, he got into the lead. And we were talking about this. We don't quite understand... We might try and get him on the podcast if he um, if he's free, but we don't understand yeah. why he went for the wets. When you're in the lead, it's a safe bet just to mirror what people do. You don't need to be taking the risks in those situations because 
you can let other people do that and if it works for them in a lap you'll be able to know if they're gaining time or not and for yeah. Falcon to do such a risky call <laughs> in the lead under such an important race I just don't think he was thinking rationally he didn't think about well, his decision I think he saw Jeff say it and he kind of just panicked I think that was a bit and of it never went to wet really yeah like, no, that's a good point was never like a couple of laps yes but like it was never the tire you wanted to be on and for no. him to just jump straight onto it was I think a huge risk it was like we were kind of saying a bit with Neo and uh, and Harry in Quali I think if you'd have just thought Okay, so it's inters. I know it's going to go heavy rain and inters and then dry again. So I know I'm going to have to go on the dries at one point. If he pits for wet, he's then going to have a period of light rain or where the track is damp, where the full wets will be horrendous. So he's going to have yeah. to pit for inters. Or if he did slicks at that point, he'd lose so much time. So then he's going to have to pit for slicks again. That's two extra stops than someone who's <laughs> just pitting from inters dragging it out and slicks now did falcon honestly think and anyone else who did that strategy did they think that the wet tires were going to gain him about i don't know 40 seconds is that two pit stops yeah it's about that yeah and uh, i think all someone had to do was work out how much time they'd lose with the pit stops <coughs> and it had uh, made their decision a lot easier so i think that's yeah. again a bit of inexperience no, showing how much pressure he was under as well. I mean, for I'm to, awful under pressure. I didn't think that he had to but, make um, that call. <laughs> yeah, no, Which, he must have felt pressured into it. Yeah. I don't see why he'd Which make it otherwise. Yeah. Then we had um, fucking Harry and P10. Ah, oh, he cannot bumper cars finish bumper where cars. he was. <laughs> yeah, go check out the top five moments of the week and you'll know exactly what we mean. Um... This oh. oh Harry's such an interesting driver because he's got the pace to win a race. He has oh, the pace to get pole, arguably over one lap. You could say he's the fastest in the league. He's got, I think he probably yeah. has the most poles so far. Yeah, he didn't have a win. Yeah, he probably does. Um, I'm not even he sure he has. Podium? I'm not even sure he has second or a podium. Um, but either way, like Harry just doesn't have the racecraft. Like. No. when it comes down to actually performing it doesn't matter in practice if he can drive wheel to wheel but we saw when he was behind Falcon in those wet conditions he's just got to relax he's got to calm down there's no yeah. point pushing someone around because losing your wing you're losing you could potentially be losing a second a lap even with light green damage track depending yeah. um, and that's way too much time to be losing each lap and I just don't think sometimes Harry thinks with his head. I think he thinks everything is so race critical. He just does everything as fast as he can. And we've seen countless yeah, times that that has held him back from getting the result he wants. And he did tell me he got wing damage on Falcon in turn one. And he said Falcon broke early. From watching the stream, I didn't think Falcon broke particularly early. It might have looked different on Harry's screen. Yeah. Um, well, like, but Falcon's you should be being cautious. Yeah, you should not because those like at the start and in the wets, you shouldn't be right up behind someone because you know if they break, you're not gonna have time to react. Yeah, because I was stuck behind him for like the whole first stint. I he did had see that. Yeah. Him. Yeah, and I wasn't able to pass him. But like when he got when he was behind Falcon, like he knew Falcon was on the wrong tires, and like he's breaking so much later than Falcon. And he's just pushing them around. If he had a bit of um, patience, because he, he caught up to him at the Singapore, the old Singapore sling. He could have just There's dive no bombed him at the hairpin yeah. at the Singapore sling. Yeah, exactly. He got away to that or the straight. But yeah. like, he's just he's pushing them around the Singapore sling. And yeah, and if he'd have followed Falcon, boring. he would have, I don't know, he'd have lost maybe f three seconds, something like that. A reasonable amount of time, but knocking your wing off. It's fair to say he loses you a lot, a lot more time, especially if you still yeah. don't get past him. Exactly. And then he had to retire, or he just did retire. I think this is like a, a pattern. I think this happens far too often for Harry to be considered yeah. the title contender, in my opinion. He just doesn't have that ability 
to keep it clean for whatever reason and you can't win a race you could be two seconds a lap faster than Decky and Michael but if you crash into someone every time you get near them it doesn't matter how much faster you are yeah. so he also yeah. seems to give up a lot very easily he does and then give the back up here, very easily. got a bit of damage off Louis while still in P3 he's got a very short and then he just retires um, I know he's done it again here in Singapore but um, anyway moving on to the DNFers, the other DNFers, we had um, Owen. I think he, when he started uh, to rain, I think he hit straight onto wets. Yeah, I don't think he had the cleanest first stint, so. Um, yeah, I think he got damage. Yeah, off I don't think Jarry it was going too well Owen. for him. Yeah, and then we had Jerry, who also DNFed. Binned it. D2s. Yeah, I got a nice <laughs> hefty amount of wing damage from him. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Which was, um, was which was awesome. wonderful as always. Yeah, it's very disappointing. Well, the main talking point really from that race was Mitch's dominant performance. My God, you like podium, <laughs> and yeah, just my podium in general is amazing. So can't everyone... argue with that. I can't argue. With yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think. Well, Falcons championship's probably over now after that. Yeah, let's um let's take a look at yeah. the, take a look at the championship table. So in first place, um IRT Michael extends his lead over second place man Decky to twenty two points. Is this championship over? I don't think so. Oh. Okay. I think there is a chance that Michael might not get a P two, but then you can think of it on the flip side. If Michael wins a race it's game over. Like no I think Decky will win it. I think Decky can win every race left. I, f I am one hundred and ten percent confident that that could happen, but yeah, I'm also fairly confident Michael could get second every race. So, I think Falcon would love it if he's not going to win it. He'd love to stop Michael. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. We'll see what Falcon so, there's says. There's still motivation there for um, Falcon, thing. even though he might have a chance to fight. He doesn't want his teammates to get out, so that might. Cause a few, um, yeah, we could see a bit of a things. battle there. Um, yeah. But yeah, in third we have Falcon now 37 points adrift. Arguably the bottle of the season. Um, fighting it out with June. Oh, I mean, Falcon oh, has just... He's thrown away so many points. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he only has himself to blame there. Mitch Definitely. in fourth place. Um, a country mile off the lead but as he tells me after the last two races I don't know why people keep ruling me out I'm still mathematically in it <laughs> so Mitch is <laughs> still in the title season? fight <laughs> like, last two races yeah if Mitch had tried all season he'd be there or thereabouts yeah. um, we've got Jim in 5th Neo in 6th, Rick in 7th Killer in 8th, those guys don't seem to be changing positions, I can't remember the last time Killer got points I can't um, last on killer raced. Rick obviously missing a few races. Neo finally finished a race without disconnecting. <laughs> um, then in ninth you've got me. Uh, it's kind of funny because last it's podcast very... I was fourteenth, and now I'm somewhere yeah. ninth. So that's wonderful. Very uh, close. Yeah. But yeah, as you're, you're saying, play. absolutely close. So from me down to, oh my god, down to sixteenth. Uh, there is 12 points, and that's uh, me in 9th, Owen in 10th, Karen in 11th, Max in 12th, you, Gary, in uh, 13th, Jari in 14th, Louis in 15th, and Harry all the way down in... Oh, and Kallik is on it. Oh, so there's yeah. 17, so Harry on 31, and Kallik on 31. So that could all chop and change quite a lot in the next few races. Um, yeah. Yeah, Very interesting easy. to see how it pans out. I think quite a few had given up, but nonetheless, it's still interesting to see what could happen. Yeah, I want to hopefully sneak into that top ten of the championship. That'd be wonderful, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was 18th, I think, like, uh, before this race. Yeah, you, know, you I'm were like just on the cusp of ten, so much Definitely better. Good. Yeah, um, we've got Jeff in 18th, Adam. 
F1 racer in 19th and YHYY rounding out the top 20 we obviously have Simsa and Agony and Agony has actually left PRL yeah. I believe yes. um, sad to see because he's been in it as long as I have I believe slightly longer but as having been teammates with him obviously going to miss him definitely a character just hasn't really had his heart in it recently um, and Simsa I'm not even sure if he's like still on the face of the earth. Haven't heard from him in a while. Haven't seen him come online or anything. So <laughs> we'll see about that one. Um, but yeah, that All rounds right. out our drivers' championship and our kind of synopsis of what happened in Singapore. So now we, I guess, we could move on to the predictions for USA. Obviously, yes. not seen any practice runs so far. So I think we might as well just skip straight to the top three. I want to say uh, Neo, but I don't know if he's going to lag out. I'm going to say Deck will win. Uh, I reckon Lewis will come second. And third place will be Michael. Well, that would make the championship very interesting. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, I'm going to say Deki will win. If Neo doesn't have any internet issues, he'll come second. And third, I think he'll be Falcon. Ooh, all right. Um, well, that's that. That those are our predictions. If you want to let us know what who you think the top three will be. That would be wonderful, <laughs> and I'm sure everyone would love to hear that. So now I guess we will move on to the interview, as I believe um, Falcon will be joining us. So we will move on to that now. It's going to be fun. On to the guest section. This week we have a guest with us, which is fortunate for us and for you. This week we are joined by none other than IRT underscore Falcon. Falcon, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good to hear. Um, so, uh, given it's on recent affairs, would you like to tell us some of your theory behind your strategy in Singapore and just generally explain the race from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, uh, qualifying, I got Dirty F and Calic who decided not to get out of my way. Uh, that yeah, I've seen that actually. Me. That was quite important. Yeah, he just, I mean, he didn't blatantly hold me up, but it was evident dirt, yeah, and I just think it would have been nicer if he would have, um, you know, got out of my way, but apparently him and Mike had some talks before the race, so, uh, who knows, but, uh... Ooh, ooh, spice it up! <laughs> it's my start! Well, uh, yeah, the start was okay, and then when it got to intermediates, my, I think the drives were really going off. Uh, so I had to pit anyway, and it turned out to be the correct decision. It was, it was an incredible by decision. Yeah, it was a great decision. Yeah. First time round was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, Second time round. Second time though. I, I got a, I got a, hang on, hang on. I got about a <laughs> four second lead. Um, yeah. So it was all dandy. And then um, I I was trying to be a bit too witty, and I asked Jeff, you know, what what's the weather? And he said it's heavy rain. So I thought, oh, okay, let's pit for, let's try and mug everyone off, like Mike did to me in Italy. But it just... <laughs> just Dig really number work. two? It didn't go well. <laughs> and, yeah, it cost me my championship. Yeah, one but. thing we can work out is, first of all, as much as it is heavy rain, that doesn't mean it's heavy rain conditions. Yeah, So I that know. was a bit I mean, odd. Jeff, but what... The thing is, Jeff said... There's an alternate strategy and said yeah. to go on wet. So it's so Jeff, that. though. Yeah, see, yeah, what but... was confused us, though? At least was it gives surely me an excuse you... to play in the game. <laughs> oh, God. Surely you knew it was going to be dry and inters towards the end of the race. Did that not make you yeah, think well, I should stay when, on when this tire? Yeah, when he said it was heavy rain, though, he said for the next like 15 minutes. So, natural instinct was, you know, to. Okay, yeah, well, I guess that's understandable. Yeah. Um, I don't want to well, like, like shame. I don't want to make that. Yeah, I don't want to shame it, but that probably lost you the championship or lost you any chance of the Game championship with that call. Cool. I mean, um, come on, Sam. I knew that. Which is a little sad <laughs> to see. 
Stockman can still win it, I believe. Um, I so can mathematically easily can still win it. God. Mitch can mathematically win it, but he's not going to win it. He can't. He's, he's outside of 75 um, if, points. If Decky and Michael collided, you could still win it. I, I don't think that will happen. They've raced wheel to wheel on many tracks and not. Yeah, yeah so Mike needs Decky the same way as history to me, then surely this could be an instant. Oh, dig number three. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. <laughs> no, well, I guess that leads well, us on to the second question, doesn't it, Gary? Yeah, so you think you don't have a chance at all for your title hopes? Like, they're gone? Until I mean, I think realistically, I, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to still go. Uh, keep going to the very end. Because yes. uh, it's not over until it's over. Um, oh, yeah. I, mean, I knew it was going to be a bit hard with Brazil being the final race, because I am awful out there. But as I said, I'll try my best, but it, it's a long shot. Yeah, well, well that that realism. Um, that kind of ties us on to um, our third question. Would you side with Decky over Michael in this title fight? Um, I, I wouldn't say I'd necessarily side. I, I, I think I'm mainly going to race my own race, but I think if some things uh, happen or whatever, then depends on the circumstances. If you could um, stop Michael winning the championship, would you? So if I, he were ahead of him and if he passed you, he'd win. Would you do? We let him pass, or we like try that, everything? That, that is a question. Wins? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, he does. I, I, whoever finishes for the most points deserves it. But I don't I'm believe outweigh. in that at all. But I'm fair enough if you do. Well, I think, especially after the way he, what he did in Italy, um, I'd certainly not be as happy as if Decky won. What did happen in Italy, exactly? Because you followed him into the pit. Because on the video, it not does like not fought, look not like, like Michael's him. fault, to be honest. Right. You're both on PlayStation. You know that thing called a party, where you just speak privately? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, it, all the secrets will be uncovered there. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Yeah, come well, on. I mean, I think first of all, it's down to common sense. I mean, you saw the lap before I almost binned it into Parabolica. Um, surely you've, that's fine to say. Surely, you know. though, at this point, you've got to think Michael's not going to help a title rival. No, regardless of the constructors, are, which is which yeah, is wrapped up. Not. Probably, I'm not entirely but sure. There. I think you've got to also remember. We've always had respect for each other on the racetrack, no matter the circumstances. So if one of us gets damaged, we'll always tell the other. Okay, that's fair. So enough. I expect it to have a bit of respect. I mean, that's just a one-on-one a -on -one agreement that we always have had. And I said, I've got a pit slap. And, um, yeah, he decided to go in, and I just didn't think at the time. I was just kind of in the zone, so I didn't really look at teammates in the pits. And I followed him. That is fair enough. Is. Um, Alonso Hamilton all over again, isn't it? Yeah, that Hamilton Rosberg. <laughs> brings us on to our <laughs> okay, Michael, what's worse? final I, 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 question, I, I believe. Also for constructors, as much as we may have already wrapped it up, I think it's just a bit of respect, I think, as teammates. But anyway, it's over now, so... You're going to team next season anyway. I don't know. <laughs> we already know you're not. Um, so, Gary, if you want to ask Falcon his final question of the interview, that would be wonderful. Yes. So, your relationship with Michael, like, how bad is it really? Like, do you even. Like, because yeah. last week in the chat, it went off after and, Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went mad. And it's. I also just want to clear up. I wasn't yeah. getting angry at Mike for what happened in. Singapore again. It was in yeah. The it's built up. Everything had built up. I get that. Yeah. It wasn't. I wasn't blaming Mike for the strategy call. Um, <clears throat> it was one hundred percent my fault. It was what again was said after. Um, which caused friction. You want to say what was, what was said? I, I think I'll we'll leave that to. Uh, no, oh. no. 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 Oh. Come on. Yes. There's not an episode no, two to this Falcon. It's said in this this episode, right? It ends here. 
I've signed no agreement to this. Uh, oh. <laughs> you know, we're going to give uh, us a bit of juicy guys. That was kind of what we no, were getting at, like, because think... we know I, I, you and Michael haven't got on recently. There's been a lot of words said. Um, at the end I, of the day, we we were in a championship fight, and you're never going to be best friends. I think that's proved with obviously we saw with Hamilton and Rosberg in real life. Uh, agreed they with that. Are. But this, go, you two it's went like... from. Like Talking best about. friends, inseparable, playing every game together, to saying things that I wouldn't say about people I disliked, to be honest. So yeah. there's got to be thinking. more in it. Like Deck, you didn't fall out with Kara. Those two are still exactly. friends. Exactly, and they tackle like and they, they, me they was an intense rivalry. We were, we've known each other for well over a year now, so I think we're a little closer than they were. I mean, they may have known each other for longer but we used to play you know every yeah, no, all enough. the time and I think it's just when it's close where it's a lot no I do agree with that it like, gets a lot personal when you know the person so that rounds us off for the interview with you Falcon I hope you've enjoyed it you got any words you want to say to Michael any other driver or as a whole the people watching this podcast um, not really I mean it's been a fun season, but I think everyone's got a little bit bored of the game. Well, That's I say that. But yeah, I, mean, very I, I think we all say that, but when you've got people joining two new leagues in the past month or so, it begs a difference. I'm going to imagine that Michael has recently joined two new leagues. Um, no comment. So, <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to be Dig number so, four. No. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> No, no. It's, it's only friendly. Um, yeah. Okay, on that icy note, that <laughs> sums us up for the podcast. I've had a great time as always, and I guess we will see you after USA. So take care, everyone, and goodbye. Bye.